Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Asa and I have another really simple one day project for you. After almost a year of looking, I finally got a Raspberry Pi 4B. I used our Pi locator to find one and paid retail. I didn't have to buy it from a scalper on eBay and I'm really glad about that. There's a million different uses for a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna set this one up to run Octoprint on my second Prusa. I run two Prusa Mark 3S Pluses, one I have set up with a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. So today I'll set up my second printer with this Raspberry Pi 4B and use it to run Octoprint. So why Octoprint? Octoprint is one of the best mods you can make for your 3D printer. It is the second upgrade I recommend. First being an enclosure, second being installing Octoprint. Octoprint is free, it's easy and fast to set up, and it's loaded with features. First and foremost, I use Octoprint to avoid having to run up and down my basement steps with an SD card to get G-code onto my 3D printers. Mainly, I use Octoprint to start 3D printing jobs and monitor progress. I also use a plugin called Octolapse to make time lapses for these videos. I use images and video to help troubleshoot or detect where things went wrong for a failed print. And I'll use Octoprint for things like preheating the hot end when I know I need to go into my basement and do a filament change or something. Octoprint is open source. You could set this all up yourself for free. You can also pay third parties to set up some more advanced features if you're not familiar with networking. Examples are pushing notifications to your phone or using AI image detection to detect any print failures and stop prints. I haven't needed more than just the basics. I stick to Octoprint, I use it in my home network, and like I said, it's an incredible quality of life improvement for your 3D printing projects. Now, you don't need to buy a Pi 4B to run Octoprint. If you want to do this project, you can buy a cheaper Raspberry Pi 3. They're less expensive and readily available. There are excellent guides for this entire process available online. I followed the one on Prusa's website. I'll walk you through it in this video if you're interested in doing a similar setup yourself. There are many solutions other than Pi's. If you want to run Octoprint, you can use an old laptop, an old desktop computer. You can buy a used one off Facebook Marketplace. I chose a Raspberry Pi as a solution because they're small, they have very low power consumption, and the process to set it up is basically seamless. This whole project start to finish should take about 20 minutes. You'll need a Raspberry Pi, SD card, and you'll probably want a case and some type of cooling, either active cooling or passive cooling. I'll use an old cell phone as a camera to take the images for time lapses. If you like this type of content, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get to unboxing and setting up Octoprint. For this setup, all you really need is the Raspberry Pi, a micro SD card, and a power cable. I'm also going to test my Raspberry Pi by connecting it to a monitor and a keyboard. You can skip this step if you want to to save a little time. Then using my laptop, I'm going to install the Raspberry Pi operating system and Octoprint to a micro SD card. The first thing I'll do is add some heat sinks so I have some passive cooling. There are a lot of ways to connect to your Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna do the easiest, which is just to plug in a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and connect it to my home Wi-Fi. You'll need power from USB-C, you'll need an HDMI micro cable, and a USB keyboard and mouse. First, I'm just gonna check that I get video from my Raspberry Pi to my TV. Then I'll set up the operating system and octoprint on the micro SD card before assembling it all. All right, video and keyboard works, so now I'll install the operating system and octoprint on the micro SD card. There are pretty clear instructions for this whole process on Prusa's website. I'll put a link in the video description. All you have to do is download and install the Raspberry Pi Imager, and it will handle the installation of the Raspberry Pi operating system and Octoprint. It's really seamless. You just have to find the specific category on 3D printers and install Octopi. I'll choose my SD card as the target location. Make sure you choose correctly as it will format your SD card. Don't forget to follow the advanced options, setting up your Pi to connect to your Wi-Fi. This will take a few minutes based on your network speed and the speed of your computer and SD card. Mm -hmm. 
That's it, took about 20, 25 minutes. I now have Octoprint running on my Raspberry Pi. Now I'm gonna log into the server using my laptop to finish some final settings, then I'll plug it into my Prusa 3D printer. If you use the normal defaults, just go to octopi.local on your home Wi-Fi and you should be able to log in to your new Octopi server. There's a straightforward setup wizard that you can go through and the settings for Prusa printers are clearly listed on their website. To make things easy, I'm gonna go through the setup wizard and for the most part, I'll choose default settings. For the webcam, I'm gonna plug in an old cell phone and use that camera. Excellent. At this point, I have an Octoprint server set up on my Raspberry Pi. I can see the camera working through the server control. The final thing I'll do here is set up a plugin that's called Octolapse that takes really good time lapses, and then I'll plug this all into my Prusa. Plugging the Pi into your 3D printer is really easy. You just plug in power, connect it to your 3D printer. In this case, the Prusa has a USB type A connector, and then I'll plug in my webcam. I see the temperature of my hot end in my bed. The camera webcam is coming through really well. I can even see myself in real time, which is kind of cool. I'm doing a quick test by heating the hot end and the bed. Good, and it's homing well. Perfect, everything looks set up correctly. Now it's time to do some prints. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel if you want more content on building, crafting, and making. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.